So now that we've covered our basic understanding of the outside of a prokaryotic cell and the inside of a prokaryotic cell, we're going to go even further and now understand uh, a little bit more of a broad component of the prokaryotic cell, which would be the genetic diversity that we see. How do prokaryotic cells differ from one another? Do they differ from one another? These are things that we're going to answer in the next couple of flowcharts. So we'll entitle this next flowchart, Genetic Diversity 1. Now, a good thing to always start off with is, well, did we understand or at least study genetic diversity in eukaryotes? And we did. We saw tons of genetic diversity in our Mendelian genetics lecture, in our non-Mendelian genetics lecture, even in many of the ecology lectures. We saw the fact that evolution happens, natural selection happens, and diversity thus happens. So in prokaryotes, what's the deal? What's the scenario? Do we still see the same thing? Do, are these laws different? Uh, what happens? That's what we'll study, basically. So, first and foremost, in genetic diversity of prokaryotes, we have to understand that they undergo a very basic reproduction mechanism. So they have very basic reproduction. In this basic reproduction, they will mainly consist of binary fission. That's their main route of reproduction. It's a very simple, and it occurs under optimal conditions. And if we have these optimal conditions, because it's simple, because it's basic, it will uh, allow the bacteria to divide every one to three hours. And this is, of course, an exponential growth, and that will cause a great amount of growth in the total population of the bacteria. So we know that bacteria can grow very, very fast, and they can uh, reproduce very, very fast for that reason. Grow as meaning the amount. So we can actually talk about that a little bit more by stating that bacteria undergo uh, rapid, because of this divide every one to three hours, rapid reproduction, and with rapid reproduction also comes sort of a, a, a caveat, uh, an extra that comes with reproduction, and that's mutations. Rapid reproduction and also mutations, coupled with mutations. So, what we have to first understand is, of course, ground our knowledge. What do we know about our cells, aka eukaryotes, and how can we compare that to prokaryotes? What I want you to recall is the following. So write this down. Recall dot 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 the following. We need to recall that in sexually reproducing organisms, okay, what we studied last semester essentially, in sexually reproducing organisms, we have a great amount of genetic diversity. So genetic diversity is due to a two major events. Two major events would be meiosis and fertilization due to meiosis, the Mendelian laws that we saw crossing over, um, the independent assortment, all of those things are part of meiosis, and of course also fertilization, sperm plus egg. That gives us half the DNA of a mother, half the DNA of a father, combine that with meiosis, you certainly get tons of genetic diversity between eukaryotes. As you can see from any eukaryotic study, there is of course diversity amongst the eukaryotes. Now, how can we study this diversity in something that rapidly reproduces and rapidly mutates? Well, a good way to understand this genetic diversity of prokaryotes is to look at an example. And we're all going to be looking at, in great detail, the following example of a prokaryotic uh, organism that shows us a great amount of genetic diversity. And that would be E. coli. Probably heard of this before, but specifically to keep it in uh, relevance to us, E. coli within us, within our own human intestine. These are bacteria that live within us, don't necessarily bother us, and so they're going to have also rapid reproduction mutation. Let's see what the consequences of that are. In E. coli within the human intestine, these bacteria, these prokaryotes, undergo binary fission. Just like I stated earlier, binary fission is a simple reproductive mechanism that is going to give us mostly, so equals to, mostly, keyword here is mostly, genetically identical cells. 99%, let's say. Genetically identical cells. Why is that? Well, binary fission, if you don't remember, this is a form of asexual reproduction copying, essentially. So binary fission gives us mostly genetically identical cells. But why is it mostly? Why is it not all genetically identical cells? Well, that's because errors do occur. Errors do occur within the E. coli within our human intestine. 
these errors are going to be, the uh, best way to quantify them is to think of them like this. Think of, uh, the, there's a probability of mutation, MUT for mutation, probability of mutation in a specific gene within the E. coli in question. Uh, let's call that gene X. There's a probability of mutation in gene X. And that probability of mutation in any given gene of a E. coli, let's say, would be 1 in 10 million. 1 in 10 million, that's the probability, seems like a very small probability, right? 1 in 10 million per cell division. So that seems like nothing. 1 in 10 million, that being our error probability, that seems like it barely ever happens. But over here we have rapid reproduction and rapid mutation. How can that be possible if we have only 1 in 10 million uh, mutations within what, any given gene? Well this is because, if we state the following, among the 2 times 10 to the 10th, I don't even know what number that is, it's a huge number, huge number, 2 times 10 to the 10th, new cells, new E. coli produced in intestine, this is almost every day, produced in intestine, this is happening every day, every waking moment of your life, amongst these billions and trillions, whatever this number is, of new cells, you are going to end up with, based off of this 1 in 10 million rate of mutation, you're going to end up with at least 2,000 cells with mutation, cells with mutation in that gene, in gene X, just like we stated. So 2,000 cells. Doesn't seem like a lot in terms of all of these new cells that form. But again, if we scope this to the entire E. coli genome, all of the E. coli genes, we know that E. coli has about 4,300 genes. And that tells us that in one day, with some basic mathematics, we have about 9 million 9 million mutations per day, mutations per day slash day per host. So think of how many E. coli in the entire world, every single human being has E. coli within their human intestine that's going to undergo 9 million mutations a day. That's going to show that there's definitely going to be tons of genetic diversity amongst the prokaryotes, amongst just one prokaryote, and that prokaryote is within us, our E. coli. So what's our basic conclusion to get out of this A simple mathematical study? The conclusion is uh, very, very clear. What we notice is that though mutations, let's say, mutations are rare on a per gene basis, rare on per gene basis, i.e. 1 in 10 million, um, the generational, uh, the genetic variation, we'll say, but genetic variation, mutations rare on per gene uh, basis, but genetic variation increases quickly, rapidly. Look at the title, Rapid Reproduction and Mutation. Mutation is genetic diversity. Variation increases quickly, but this quick increase has to be in large, large populations. What's a large population of prokaryotes? E. coli within a human gut, within a human intestine. Large populations um, with pops with short generation times, aka those that undergo quick and efficient binary fission. Binary fission is done quick and efficiently in E. coli, thus it definitely coincides with this final conclusion that we have here. So we need short generation times, large populations, and then we'll have quick increases of mutations that give us the genetic diversity. Because of this, because we're having lots of mutations, lots of diversity, we will also get something that's consequential to mutations, rapid evolution. And a good way to understand the rapid evolution is to just quickly browse over and understand figure 27.10. It shows a very simple but very important experiment that clearly shows that rapid evolution does happen within prokaryotes. Thus, prokaryotes have rapid reproduction, rapid mutation, and thus rapid evolution as a whole. So there's definitely genetic diversity just based off of the mutation concept. We'll look at a different form of genetic diversity in the next video.